Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome viewers to the NPTEL lecture series on the calculus of variations. This is the 13th lecture in the series. In the last lecture, we had discussed isoperimetric problems. Now, we will discuss uh, in this lecture uh, the problem of finding geodesics. Geodesics are defined as the straight lines on uh, certain surfaces. That means, when you stretch those uh, surfaces as flat surface, then these uh, will reduce to straight lines. So, they have the minimum length. Uh, that means, uh, in the neighborhood of uh, uh, these uh, curves, if you consider any other curve joining two given points, then that curve uh, is having the least length. That is what is called geodesics. Now, this can be described geometrically like this, that you have a domain D in x y plane and this is the surface, this is described by like this z of function of x y. So, here there are two points given a and b and a curve joining this these two points a and b lying on this surface. Now, we want to find uh, that curve on this surface joining these two points which will have minimum length. So, that is what will be called geodesics on geodesic on this curve, uh, this surface given by z equal to z of x y. So, here we will take the example here like this. So, you will have this functional i y i of x y z and here this will be joining two points let us say A and B and then uh, this arc length on this surface is given by d s and this will be a integral a to uh, up to A to B and uh, square root of d x square plus d y square plus d z square. So, if you uh, parameterize this x as x of t, y as y of t and z as z of t such that on this surface z t is given as a function of x t y t like this. So, here you can see that then uh, here this i x y z then will be given here t will have this range t 1 less than equal to t less than equal to t 2 t 1 to t 2 square root x dot square plus y dot square plus z dot square and d t here x dot is d x by d t, y dot is d y by d t and z dot is d z by d t. And here uh, this x, y and z are satisfying this relation. So, that is what we will have. More generally, we can have uh, the following situation here or uh, this z t, z dot t will actually be then z x x dot plus z y y dot. And so, i of x y z will be given by t 1 to t 2 square root x dot square plus y dot square plus z x x dot plus z y y dot square d t. So, this is a functional of this type t 1 to t 2, where f 
here t does not appear explicitly only x y and because this z x and z y will be functions of x and y. So, and x dot y dot d t here t does not appear explicitly. So, it is of this type and so you can see that here you have Euler's or system of Euler's equation equation given by f x minus d by d t of f x dot equal to 0 f y minus d by d t of f y dot to 0 here, because you have only x and y are appearing in this and x dot y dot. So, let us take this example we know the answer of this. Let us take this sphere So, our surface as uh, here is given by x square plus y square plus z square equal to a square. So, this is sphere here and so we parameterize this x as a sin theta cos phi here any point p on this sphere you can see that this vertical angle is theta this angle is theta and this horizontal angle is phi. So, x, y, z are given like this a sin theta sin phi and z equal to a cos theta, because here p is uh, o p o p is equal to a and when we project it here. So, let us say this is p dash. So, o p dash is a sin theta. And so, uh, and let us say this one is p double dash and o p double dash that is the z coordinate that is a cos theta. And so, this x coordinate will then be let us say this is l and this is m then l p dash is that is the y coordinate which is a sin theta sin phi and projection of o p dash on y axis similarly o l equal to a sin theta sorry this is phi sin theta cos phi. So, that is what is the parametric representation here and here phi is ranging between 0 to 2 pi and theta is ranging between minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2. So, here on this surface, so we have now situation like this. and given any two points here A and B. So, this will be the kind of curve on this 
surface and we want to find the minimum length curve on this surface. So, here we see that d s is d s square is d x square plus d y square plus d z square and this is equal to a square cos theta cos phi d theta minus sin theta sin phi d phi square plus a square cos theta sin phi d theta plus sin theta cos phi d phi square plus a square sin square theta d theta square. Squaring and summing it up gives us the following that is a square d theta square plus a square sin square theta d phi square. Hence, this the length here then x. So, here it will be then function of theta and phi now only. So, here i of So, the length of uh, length of this let us dependence we will show later here this is some the independent variable here we will take as uh, theta as a function of phi and so we will have ok square root 1 plus a will come out and sin square theta and we will have d phi over d theta square and d theta. Here we treat that phi as function of theta, because here on this, this surface is described by uh, these parameters theta and phi. So, a curve on this surface a curve on this surface will be function of one of the variables either either phi as a function of theta or theta as a function of phi. So, we can take any one as independent variable. So, here theta is independent and phi is dependent variable independent so, this is the functional we have here which gives the length of. Uh, so, here it will be function of this phi and so that is what we will write it as i phi and this is lying between two angles here theta 1 and theta 2 integration over theta uh, lying between theta 1 theta 2, where they will be describing uh, theta 1 will be for this a and theta 2 will be for b. So, that is what we have here. So, for this f is now a square root 1 plus sin square theta phi dash square, where phi dash means d phi by d theta. So, here this is function of theta and phi prime, phi does not appear explicitly so 
So, here we will have the Euler equation, see Euler's equation implies f phi minus d by d theta. In place of x, we have theta f phi prime equal to uh, 0 and here f phi is 0. So, we get minus d by d theta of f phi prime equal to 0. This implies that f phi prime equal to c 1. So, first integral is readily available here and that is f phi prime equal to c 1. Now, f phi prime in this case is a sin square theta phi prime over square root 1 plus sin square theta phi prime square and this is equal to c 1. So, simplifying this squaring and solving it for of phi prime gives you. So, solving for phi prime we get phi prime equal to c 1 over sin square theta square root a square sin square theta minus c 1 square. So, here we, we integrate it here. So, like this. So, phi equal to. So, this can also be written like this d theta over sin square theta square root a square over a c 1 square. This c dividing by c 1 square will cancel. I mean dividing by c 1 here will give us this and taking out this sin square phi will give us the following minus cosec square theta plus some c 2 here. So, this can be simplified and d theta cosec, we can take this up there cosec square theta over square root a by c 1 whole square minus 1 and then writing it as 1 plus cot square theta. So, that is what we will have. So, then putting u equal to cot theta gives us put this we get this as so phi as d u over square root a a by c 1 whole square minus 1 minus u square plus c 2. So, that is sin inverse u by square root a by c 1 whole square minus 1 evaluated at theta 1 to theta 2 here. So, plus so here uh, then substituting back we get the following. So, phi will be then sin in inverse u over a by c 1 
square minus 1 plus c 2. So, taking the c 2 here, so phi minus c 2 and then taking sin of this equal to u by some thing. So, let us say this is c 3 u which is c 3 then cot theta which we can write as c 3 cos theta over sin theta. Simplifying this here and taking sin theta here. So, sin phi sin theta and this cos c 2 minus sin c 2 cos phi sin theta equal to c 3 by a. Here also we can take by a, a like this by a, a cos theta. Now, substituting back uh, we get here some constant a y minus this also we can write plus b x and this is minus c z and so we get a y plus b x plus c z equal to 0 and equation of a plane that is hence x y z lie on a plane as well as on the sphere x square plus y square plus z square equal to a square. So, the intersection is section of these two is a great circle. So, we get uh, the answer as great circle. So, joining these two points the least length would be achieved when the curve is a part of great circle. So, that is what we get here in this case. Now, let us generalize this because here we had a very special case and in the in general we have situation like this that we have some functional i 0 as x y z which is t 1 to t 2 some functional f of uh, integrand of the functional is function of x dot y dot and z dot only and uh, these points x y z lie lies on a surface given by some this g x t y t z t equal to 0. Here t 1 less than t less than equal to t. So, we apply the Lagrange's method. We use Lagrange's method of undetermined parameter so we consider this i x y z as 
T 1 to T 2 f 0 x dot y dot z dot plus some lambda t. here lambda will be a function of t in general x t y t z t. So, here the integrand is f which is f 0 x dot y dot z dot plus lambda t g of x t y t z t. And so, we get the system of Euler's equations are f x minus d by d t of f x dot equal to 0, f y minus d by d t of f y dot and f z minus d by d t of f z dot equal to z. So, here these give us here f f x will give us g x here uh, lambda times g x. So, that is what we get lambda t g x and minus d by d t of f x dot equal to 0 lambda t. So, solving it for lambda t we get from here lambda t equal to d by d t of f x dot over g x. Similarly, here g y minus d by d t of f y dot will give you lambda t equal to d by d t of f y dot over g y. And third equation f z dot equal to 0 will imply that lambda t equal to d by d t of f z dot over g z. So, we get d by d t of f x dot over g x equal to d by d t of f y dot over g y f z dot over g z. So, this is what we get in this case in general case and let us call it 13.2. So, in particular in this case So, if we consider the earlier example of a sphere. So, we have in the case when we have sphere as the surface. we get this i 0 as i 0 of x y z as t 1 to t 2 square root x dot square plus y dot square plus z dot square d t and g x y z as x square plus y square plus z square minus r, r square or a square. So, here we get 
this uh, i of x y z as t 1 to t 2 square root x dot square plus y dot square plus z dot square plus lambda t x square plus y square plus z square minus a square d. So, here we have f as x dot square plus y dot square plus z dot square plus lambda t x square plus y square plus z square minus a square. So, here we get f. So, the equation we have d by d t of f x dot over g x equal to d by d t of f y dot over g y d by d t of f z dot over g z. So, that is what this will imply that is the number we had given 13.2. So, this 13.2 that is this imp implies that d by d t of f x dot gives you a, a st, uh, this 2 x uh, 1 over uh, 1 over root 2 this thing and then you get 2 x and so 2 cancels here. So, x dot over square root this is f 0 not f actually this should be because f 0 because only f 0 involves only f 0 involves x dot y dot z dot here and so we have in this this should be d by d t of f 0 here okay. here this will anyway give us this equation will give us uh, this f 0 dot here. So, that is what we have f 0, f 0, f 0. So, f 0 here is square root x dot square plus y dot square plus z dot square. Sorry, this should not have been like this you have to correct this. It should be square root x dot square plus y dot square plus z dot square plus lambda t of this square root is only up to here that is x square plus y square plus z square minus a square. So, this is what we have here and so whether we write f 0 or not it uh, does not really matter. We will have the same result here because this x dot y dot z dot are involved only in this f 0 part and that is why we get f 0 here. So, we get this x dot over 
this x dot square plus y dot square plus z dot square d by d t of this and uh, this over we have uh, this g x g x is this one that is lambda t uh, lambda t is gone anyway only g x is this one. So, we get 2 x and then d by d t of y dot over a square root x dot square plus y dot square plus z dot square over g y means 2 y and this is equal to d by d t of z dot over square root x dot square plus y dot square dot square over 2 z. So, simplifying this will give us the following. So, here we have, so we get in this case d by d t of x dot over f 0 and this is d by d t over x and d by d t of y dot over f 0 over y d by d t of z dot over f 0 over z. And so, opening this we get x double dot f 0 minus x dot f 0 dot over x f 0 square y double dot f 0 minus y dot f 0 dot over y f 0 square z double dot f 0 minus z dot f 0 dot over z f 0 square. So, simplifying this solving it for x over y we get x double dot over f 0 minus x dot f 0 dot here this over this y double dot f 0 minus x dot sorry y dot f 0 is x over y and now cross multiplying and then solving it for f 0 dot over f 0 we get x double dot times y minus x dot y double dot here and then over x dot y minus x y dot equal to f 0 over f 0 dot over f 0. Here f 0 is square root x dot square plus y dot square plus z dot square. And so, this is also solving it for the other two y double dot z minus y z double dot over y dot z minus y z dot. Now, uh, the numerator is the derivative of this since x double dot y minus x dot y double dot is d by d t of x dot y minus x y dot and y double dot z minus y z double dot equal to d by d t of y dot z minus y z dot. So, integration gives you l n of this x dot y minus x y dot absolute value of this and l n of y dot of y dot z minus y z dot plus some l n c and so raising it to exponential we get x dot y minus x y dot over y dot z 
minus y z dot equal to c. Now, here so again solve uh, cross multiplying and solving it for let us say we can write it here in this manner that x dot plus c z dot over x plus c z equal to y dot this implies. So, again integrating here now this gives you l n mod x plus c z equal to l n mod y plus l n d. So, we get here x plus c z over y equal to d and so x plus c z minus d y equal to 0. So, this gives you equation of a plane. So, x y z lie this point x y z lies on a plane. Also x y z are on the sphere ends x y z move moves on uh, an arc of a great circle. So, we get the same result, but in a different manner. So, here like this we can have uh, these uh, equations solved and now we move on to certain problems where boundary points will be uh, moving. So, what we have so far uh, that a functional like this i y equal to x 0 to x 1 f x y y prime y prime x. So, d x where this rather we took x 1 to x 2 where y at x 1 is y 1 and y at x 2 is y 2 where the points a which is x 1 y 1 and b x 2 y 2 we have dealt with the functionals like this where this uh, the points are fixed. Now, we shall consider the functionals here let us say we shall consider the functionals where a x 1 y 1 or b x 2 y 2 are moving or both a x 1 y 1 and b x 2 y 2 are moving. So, these problems are, are called moving boundary value problems. These problems are called problems with moving boundaries.
Now, so here situation is like this. You have this point A and B, and let us say this is the curve joining them. This is x 1 y 1, and this is B x 2 y 2, and these points are moving. So, next one curve could be like this, other could curve could be like this. So, A move the here. So, that is A x 1 dash y 1 dash and B has moved here B x 2 dash y 2 dash or situation could be like this that only A is fixed and here both A and B moving A and B moving here A is fixed B is moving. So, A is x 1 y 1, B is x 2 y 2 and now B has moved here. So, B x 2 dash y 2 dash and it can move like this. So, B x 2 double dash y 2 double dash. So, B is moving here freely or it may move along a curve. So, it may be constrained movement or it may be a free movement. Here also A can move on uh, a curve uh, or on a surface. Similarly, B can move if it is a higher dimensional problem, then it can move on a surface also. Here in two dimension case, they may move freely in the plane or they may move along the uh, certain given curves. So, those will be constant movements and we will be considering these type of functionals where uh, either both the point points are moving or one point is moving and we will be dealing with various kinds of uh, pro, uh, functionals where such movements will take place. So, that is what we are going to have here and so, let us see the simple case first we start when A that is x 1 y 1 is fixed. So, that is what we will take here when A x 1 y 1 is fixed and B x 2 y 2 is moving. Now, whether both A and B are moving, uh, then uh, suppose that this I y takes, so this is what we had here I y. So, I y, suppose that I y takes the optimal value on a curve y which passes through a x 1 y 1 and b x 2 y 2 when these points are moving then then th then this y also optimizes I y when we consider these A x 1 y 1 and B 
x 2 y 2 fixed. Hence, y must satisfy Euler's equation, which is a necessary condition that is f y minus d by d x of f y prime equal to 0. So, here the, the solution of this is a two parameter family of curves y as y x c 1 c 2. So, if a this x 1 y 1 is fixed, then one of the constants c 1 c 2 is determined. Hence, in the case when b is moving i y, i y can take optimal value on an extremal only that is one of the members of the one parameter family of curves y equal to y x c which is a subfamily of so let's say here we had given numbers so let's say this is 13.3 and this is 13.4, the subfamily of 13.3, because one of the constants there in from C 1, C 2 is determined that we will denote as C and so we get uh, this subfamily from this. So, we need to consider, so we will, so we would consider only i y which is the function and it will be parameter function of parameter c also like this. So, uh, you have x 1 to x 2 f of x y x c and y prime x c d x. So, we will find the optimal value of this over the uh, family of. So, we will be doing all the calculation here over the family of uh, this one parameter curves uh, given by 13.4, which are the solutions of uh, the, this Euler's equation. So, that is what we are going to consider and here we will be considering the variation of uh, this functional and uh, we will restrict our analysis, our calculations uh, wherever this y appears even though we may not be denoting uh, this dependence on c, but wherever we consider this i subsequently this y will be actually 
the solution of the Euler equation. So, that is what we are going to consider in the next lecture. Thank you very much for being this. Thank you.